It means that signal. We need more power. And we're back. We're at Origins 2017, and here I am at the Renegade booth speaking with Sarah Erickson. Hello, how are you? Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Voice of E. You know, Sarah's never been on the show before. I haven't. I'm so excited. First time. I, I am too. Uh, so, what I wanted to talk to you about is that since I haven't talked to Renegade Games before, I would like to know well, first of all, what is Renegade Games? How did Renegade Games come about? Oh, that's a great question. So Scott Gaeta, president of Renegade Game Studios, it developed or created this fantastic company just a few years ago. So we're not even four years old yet. We're still in our third year. And he is an industry giant, though. He's worked for Decipher, for Upper Deck. He was one of the co-founders of Cryptozoic Entertainment. So he's been around the industry a long time and finally just had the experience and the motivation and the time to create this fantastic company where we just make games for everybody. We just find fantastic games that need a home and we make them absolutely gorgeous, make sure the rules are fantastic, and put them out for everybody to enjoy. Uh, so what is the big game that uh, Renegade is known for up to now? Well, Lanterns was really where we started. That game came out right kind of at the beginning of the company and has really just been fan a great gateway game into the industry for a lot of board gamers. Um, but in addition to that, we had that going for a couple of years. People still love it. But just recently in October, Clank came out and it kind of took us by surprise by how incredibly popular it is. Clank is a deck building adventure. You are trying to get down into the depths of the dungeon, grab a treasure, hope the dragon doesn't bite you and make it back out before that dungeon collapses and it is a riot it's one of those games that gives you an experience you're going to keep talking about later which doesn't always happen with games yeah so the, obviously the theme is dungeon uh, fantasy type uh, how, how long does it take to play it's about a 45 minute game but it depends if you play with somebody who just goes into the shallow part of the dungeon grabs the first treasure they see and runs out as fast as possible it can be a lot shorter if you have somebody who really wants to explore all the depths of the dungeon and they're really sneaky and quiet about it, they don't make too much noise, they could be down there for a while. So for the people who already have Clank, what is in the works for more in the world of Clank? Well, there's a few things going on. So we do already have an expansion that's out. Mm -hmm. And we, in addition to that, have a Renegade Game Studios app that has more content for Clank that's totally free. You can play uh, the solo version using the app playing against the content on there. Uh, and you can also uh, play with extra adventure global effects. As you're playing with your whole group of multiple people, it keeps track of things that you're doing, and every once in a while, something good or bad can happen. And the app tells you all that stuff. So we will be both expanding the physical game with more stuff coming out in the future that is under wraps right now. I didn't tell you any of that. And then we also will have more content in the app coming out. We're really excited for that. and. Keep your eye out for it. Okay, great. Now tell me, what have you brought along here to Origins that uh, you're, you're demoing here this weekend? So we have three big new releases this weekend. We've got Flip Ships, which is a cooperative dexterity game by King Klinko, it, where you're trying to save the universe from these evil enemy invaders by flipping a token onto the board. It'll land on some enemy ships that are coming towards you, hopefully destroy them, and save your entire world from the invasion. So if you so want it's a dexterity to, game. it is a cooperative dexterity game. If you want to join the fight, we have it for sale here, but we're almost out of it. It's been really hot this weekend. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, keep going. So we've got <laughs> that one and we also have uh, the Fox in the Forest. It's a two player trick taking game and okay. two player trick taking games are very unusual. You, most of the time you need three to five players a lot of the time it's exactly four players, but in this one you actually play with exactly two players each time. And that's great because it leaves it open for a lot of couples, a lot of people who want to play just in between games as a filler. Really works out great. The artwork is incredibly beautiful and it's a partnership we did with Foxtrot Studios and those guys really put a lot of effort into every game they make and the end product is just perfect. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you know, you, you're right. You really don't see a lot of two player trick taking games. Yes. Yeah, that should be interesting. That's so we've, try. we've got that one. Um, we sold out right away here, but that is coming out July 19th. So it'll be on shelves soon at your friendly local game store. And then the last one we have releasing this weekend is Sentient. It's a game by J. Alex Gavern, designer of World's Fair 1893. And in that game, you are in charge of a factory and you are trying to 
make sure that you can incorporate bots into your factory that you're creating in a more most efficient way. As you plug them into your factory, they're going to modify dice on your board. And those dice are going to be used to give you points on the robot cards. But as you're modifying them, they might change the dice you had for other bots and mo modify that scoring. And so there's a lot of puzzly aspect to it. There's also some area control, some set collection. There's a lot of moving parts in this game that make it very thinky and a really good way. Uh, is it And is it true that some of the robots can actually become sentient and attack the players? Uh, that does not happen, but I think about that for an expansion. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> now, I did notice on the big hotness list, uh, I believe it is Flatline. Yeah. Yep. And which, of course, has to be about the movie Flatliners. <laughs> because each copy comes with a defibrillator, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, in the original prototype of the game, there was a defibrillator card. <laughs> there, you know, there's not a regular defibrillator area of the board, but there might be a card in there that's still called that. I'll have to double check. But in this game, you are part of a medical bay team and you are trying to save patients. So Flatline does still make sense in that respect. And you are going to be working with the rest of your team, rolling dice, meeting the needs of these patients that have been harmed in the horrible enemy attack on your ship. But while you're trying to save those patients, you're doing this on a one minute timer, it's very intense, but other emergencies are occurring around you as well. If you don't pay attention to those emergencies, you can easily lose the game. So it drags your attention all over the board, lots of gamery aspects, but the core mechanic of the rolling the dice and placing them onto the needs on the board is very similar to Fuse, which was also designed by King Clanko. Oh yeah, okay. So was that released or? It came out May 31st and we have copies here. I think we just ran out of it. It's been very popular. Tons of people have been playing it. That table has been slammed all weekend. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I've been seeing it on the hotness all weekend, so. <laughs> it's been great. What else do you have uh, in the works? We have a few really big projects for Gen Con coming up. We've got Ex Libris, which is a worker placement game about building a library. You're a librarian in sort of this very cool, unique fantasy land where we've got ghost librarians. You can play as a bookworm librarian if you'd like to. One of my personal favorites is a gelatinous cube, is a playable <laughs> character. And as you go through this game, you're placing books on your shelf. And if you can put them in alphabetical order, you're gonna get a bunch of points for that. But you have to be careful of the banned books. You don't want any of those when the inspector comes to check out your library. All right. So. I would have never guessed that one in a million years. <laughs> So that's Ex Libris. We also have Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Card Game. They'll be arriving for Gen Con this year, and it's a deck building game based on Scott Pilgrim. So if you love that movie, if you've read the graphic novels, you for sure have to check this out. You get to pick your favorite character to play, and each character's unique deck is going to work very differently from all the other ones. And my favorite thing about this game is that the combat, like most deck building games, you can purchase cards or you can fight cards. And in the combat, each one of your cards you have has buttons on them and it's either a b up right or up left down or right so just like you would imagine on a, a controller <laughs> if you can get the right combination of those things together play them all at the same time you pull the combo you awesome. pull off the combo and you can do a bunch of extra points i think that's an like awesome mechanic to have in a deck building game i can't believe we haven't seen it before so it'll be a lot of fun. that is hilarious that'll be good to see so, yeah okay. and we have yes. one other release for gen con really quick it's a card game by j alex cavern it's a set collection bidding game that's all i'm going to tell you about for now but it's got beautiful beautiful artwork by best sobel so make sure to check that out that'll be a gen con gen release con? yeah all right looks like we're going to gen con everybody Come on! <laughs> we'll see you there for sure. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you want to catch up later, I will be on Twitter at Play Renegade, Facebook Play RGS, or on Instagram at Renegade Game Studios. There you go. So, thanks so much for having me.